embedded firmware design and development. So first focus is on design approaches of embedded firmware. Let's go into the presentation. So here, what, what picture is this? Look at the picture and tell me what picture is this? This is a baby, okay? Once a baby is born, what do we do? We impart intelligence to the baby. So what is the meaning of imparting intelligence? We teach the baby how to walk. We teach the baby how to write, how to read, how to speak. So that is imparting intelligence. But this kind of imparting intelligence is adaptive. So what is the meaning of adaptive? For example, your baby eats with his left hand. You teach the baby not to eat with left hand and to eat with right hand. So what your baby does? Your baby understands it, corrects the mistake, and it starts eating with the right hand. This is called as adaptive. Okay, so with this as the base, now let us understand what is firmware. Firmware is also imparting intelligence, but firmware is imparting intelligence to the hardware. Okay, firmware is what? It's imparting intelligence to the hardware. But what is the difference? The difference is here, this way of imparting intelligence is not adaptive. Okay, it is one time. Once you impart a program to a hardware, it will work based on the program. It will not change itself. Or in some cases, in control applications, it is less adaptive. Okay, so now we'll focus on the design approaches. The first approach is the super loop based approach. Okay, and the second one, is the embedded operating system based approach. So the super loop based approach, this is also called as the conventional procedural programming approach. Okay, procedural programming approach. So what is this conventional procedural programming approach? It is nothing but it works in a serial way. That is one after the other. Okay, for example, let us take the card reader, okay? So what happens? You insert your card, then what happens? The card is authenticated, fine. Then the card is read, and then the necessary information is taken and the process is ended. This happens step by steps, one after the other, each time you put the card inside, okay? So that is why this is called as the conventional procedural approach, or it is called as the super loop based approach. Now you will understand why it is called as the super loop based approach. Now let's take an example. I have my void main. Okay. So what do I do? First, I do all the configuration. The function for configuration happens. Then the function for initialization happens. Okay. Then each task happens one by one. Minute. Each task happens one by one. So first is your task one, then your task two, and it keeps on repeating till you have the number of tasks. Okay, now to explain this, I have taken the traffic light example. So what happens in your traffic light? You have, now let's take early in the morning, everything is configured. Yes, everything is initialized. And first you have your orange color light. Then you have your green color light. Then you have your red color light, fine. So now imagine it, it happens only once. As soon as you turn on, you have your red, green, and yellow glowing, fine. After that, it stops working. Is it the way your traffic light should work? No, this yellow, green, and red should function continuously till the end of the day. So it should happen again and again. Now let's take this is task one, this is task two, and this is task three. So one, two, three, and again one should happen, again two should happen, and again three. So this should repeat continuously infinite number of times, okay? infinite number of times. That is called as an embedded system. You have your ATM machine. Early in the morning, only once it will give you money. No, 
It should give you money whenever required. It should happen infinite number of times. So what happens? All these tasks should happen infinite number of times. So how do I impart this in the programming? I put a while of one, okay? So what happens if I put a while of one? This happens infinite number of times. And that is why this is called as super loop based approach, okay? So now this is working continuously. If something is wrong, how do I come out of this loop? Because it will work continuously. There are two ways. One is you can reset. And the second is you can have an interrupt. So what is the difference between reset and interrupt? If you reset, what happens? The function goes here. It comes to the main. Okay. Now let's take you are in task two. If you reset, the control goes here and it starts from the first. Now, if you have an interrupt, what happens? You're in task two, and then you get an interrupt. What happens? The, pro pro the process is suspended here. Your interrupt is processed, and again, it comes back here. Okay, it comes back here after the task two. So reset, it starts from the main function. Okay, that is from the configuration. And whereas your interrupt, wherever it is suspended, it starts from there, okay? So this is your super loop based approach. Now I think it will be clear why it is called as the super loop based approach. Right? Now let us see what are the advantages and drawbacks of the super loop approach. So where is the super loop approach used? This super loop approach is used when you don't have any time criticality. When there's no time criticality, you use this super loop, super loop approach, which means when the response time is not important, okay? You have studied hard real time system and the response time is not important, then you go for the super loop approach, okay? The best example is your toy car, okay? Your toy car is working. If the response is not proper, it is not going to cause any damage to life and property. Okay, only thing you feel is the toy car is not working. It is not causing any damage. The response time is not important. So in those cases, you go for this super loop based approach. Also, in your super loop approach, you don't require any OS. No OS is required. So no operating system is required. Okay, fine. So because of all these things, why no operating system is required? Because the priority is fixed. So already the priority is fixed. How is it fixed? First, you will execute task one, then task two, then task three. So the priority is fixed. No scheduling is required. Hence, you don't require any operating system because your operating system does all these things. Fine. So naturally, what happens? The cost will be less. Fine. The cost will be less. So these are the advantages of your super loop approach. Now let us see what are the drawbacks of your super loop approach, okay? Now your system is working. If it hangs at some point of time, okay, it is going to be a problem, fine? If it hangs at some point of time, it is a problem, okay? So to overcome this, we will be using a WDT. So what is a WDT? It is called as the watchdog timer. So what will this timer do? This will continuously watch like a dog. If something is wrong, it will reset the system, okay? So this timer will watch continuously. If something is wrong, it will reset the system continuously. It will reset the system so that it works now, fine? The second drawback is you don't have real timeliness. So what is real timeliness? As the number of tasks increase, okay, the time taken to execute each task also will increase. The time taken to execute will also increase. Yes, so how can you, you overcome this? You can use multiple processors or you can use interrupts to solve this problem. So you can use interrupts or you can use multiple processors to solve this real timeliness problem. Okay, so this is your super loop approach. So what is your super loop approach? It's a conventional programming approach, which happens 
step by step, one after the other, and all the process or tasks will execute infinite number of times, and that is why we put it in y of one. Okay, then I have told you what are the advantages, where is it used, and what are the drawbacks, and how the drawbacks are overcome. Okay, the second approach is your embedded operating system based approach. Okay, so this is used in applications where an operating system is required. Okay, where an operating system is required. So you have two types of operating system. One is the GPOS. What is the GPOS? It is the general purpose operating system. It is a normal operating system which you use for your desktop and computers. Okay, it is a normal OS. Example, your Windows, your Linux, all these are your general purpose OS. Okay, so you have your operating system, fine, and your applications run on top of it. Your applications run on top of it. Okay, so what is what are you what are used for this? Your APIs are used, and just like how your device drivers are present for your mouse and keyboard, for the hardware, embedded hardware you use, it requires device drivers because again your embedded system is a hardware to access that hardware or device driver is used so what are the applications your gpos is used the applications are your pds personal digital assistants are applications where general purpose operating systems are used okay the next type of operating system is your rtos so what is rtos rtos is a real time operating system so whenever your application is real time, you go for real time operating system. So in your real time operating system, you have something called the kernel, which is the heart of your real time OS. So what will your kernel do? Your kernel will do scheduling. Your kernel will do memory management. It will do IO management. All this we will study in the authors unit. But as of now, understand your real time operating system will have a kernel. This is the heart. It does scheduling, memory management, and IO management. Okay, so the best example for your real time operating system is your Symbion OS. You would have heard this all generally 95% of your mobile phones have Symbion OS. Okay, so this is the best example for your real time operating system. And the other one is your VXWorks, is an example of your real time operating system. Okay, so embedded operating based approach is used in embedded applications where operating system is required. Okay, so when is operating system required? Operating system is required when you have to do dynamic scheduling and when the priority is not fixed. Okay, the real time applications generally require operating system. Hope you understood how, what is embedded firmware. Okay, embedded firmware is nothing but imparting intelligence. Firmware is the intelligence of your embedded hardware. Okay, fine. Then we saw the two design approaches. First one is the super loop approach, and the second one is the operating system based approach. If you have any doubts, you can contact me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.